If you will turn with me in your Bibles this Sunday to Acts chapter 2. Just want to spend a few moments together looking at uh, verses 36 through 42. We want to lift three life lessons from these passages. So Acts chapter 2 verses 36 through 42. And our focal verse for the morning is going to be taken from verse number 38. So Acts 2, verses 36 through 42, key verse, verse number 38. So we have the King James translation up on the board. It, when you found it in your Bibles, will you say amen? And if you don't mind, let's stand together and read from the screens. We have as the King James translation, Acts 2. Verse 38, as we read together, it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, let's read that again like we really mean it, family. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. As you take your seats, let's just spend a few moments together around this, this beautiful chapter of the, of the New Testament. You're, you're familiar with the storyline undergirding this. Uh, it's, the day of, it's the time of Pentecost, and the earlier part of the chapter reveals to us that as they were gathered together in worship and in prayer that the Holy Spirit lit upon them and like tongues of fire and they heard each other speaking in their own languages. They were gathered from nations all over the place. The Holy Spirit was empowering and, and enlightening and doing, his, doing the work that only he can do. And Peter, uh, because some among the crowd, the text tells us, uh, said these, 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 uh, these men and women must be drunk or they're speaking in these unknown tongues and we're hearing it in our own languages and Peter says these men are not these men are not drunk but God is doing a work that isn't prophesied and as he begins to lay out uh, the foundation and the, the 
power of what has taken place, the gospel message, a little historicity, if you will, of, of who Jesus was, why he came, what he accomplished, and the work that had taken place, why God has sent him. He, he begins to wrap up his message time with an interesting verse. Uh, verse 36 says this. Let me read it from the Amplified. He says, therefore, let the whole house of Israel recognize beyond all doubt and acknowledge assuredly that God has made him Jesus, both Lord and Christ, uh, the Messiah, this Jesus whom you have crucified. I, I want to travel, I I travel high over top of these verses because this is a big block of verses. But uh, let, me, let me start off with this life lesson, if you don't mind. The plan of the gospel is fulfilled in the death, resurrection, and the lordship of Christ. As God is glorified and believers are reconciled to him. Peter powerfully lays it out on how Jesus was raised from the dead, on how indeed uh, uh, mankind has come into his own, his own has received him not. And, but as John says, as many as received him, that them gave them the power to become the sons of God. And Peter talks about how, how uh, lest you be confused, brothers and sisters, there is a, a clear uh, need for the world to understand that they are eternally lost without Christ. That there is a clear need for the, for the world to understand that, uh, that, that this God-shaped type of void that is inside of them, this hunger that they're trying to fill by other means and measurements, uh, that, that cannot be filled by anything other than Jesus Christ. There, there's a need for the world to understand. I think Peter would want to make it plain that all this running around attempting to find happiness uh, by filling up your life with material things, all this, all this attempt to find joy and peace by, by finding it in social relationships, all of this attempt to find some kind of wholeness and happiness and, and in fulfillment in life by, by trying to find the labels of living or the workplace or, or the material realms that we, or that we surround ourselves with. All of, this, all of this attempt to find fulfillment in the, world, in the world scene will not answer the question that lies deep inside of you. It will not answer the questions of why, who am I? It will not answer the questions of why am I here? And it certainly will not answer the question of where am I going? And Peter wants to make it powerfully plain that this same Jesus whom you crucified came, indeed was God who came in, pl in flesh. It was, it, was it was prepared and proclaimed before time that Jesus would come and die on the cross for your sins. And there's no way to be reconciled back to the Father except through him. Can I just take this out? I, I need to stay with the cross for, so, for a moment. It's just no way that you can be reconciled. And we need to understand, the world needs to understand that they are separated from God. But there's a way back home. And he said, this same, this same Jesus, this, this same Jesus whom you saw crucified, this same Jesus who you saw hanging on the cross, this same Jesus whom you scourged and you ridiculed, the, the same Jesus whom you mocked and you maligned, the, the same Jesus whom you, you, who you laughed at and you, and, and, and you talked about the same Jesus who one minute you were waving palms and the next minute you were shouting crucified. The same Jesus whom you saw nailed to the cross, this same Jesus has risen and indeed he is the Lord and the Christ. And we must understand that it is God's plan. It was God's plan that he would come. He would send his only son. This is basic bibliography, bibliology. This is basic New Testament theology. This is, this is, this is basic, basic to what we know and believe about who God is and, and his son, Jesus Christ. But, but, but yet, there's a world out there that we live in and, and, and function in that we are in but not of, the text tells us, because God's plan has made a way for us to be, to be family, to be reconciled. And it is only through Jesus. And then Peter moves on with this interesting next couple of verses, uh, as I can stay with the Amplified if you don't mind. He says, now when, 
when they, the crowd, heard this, they were stung. They were, they were cut to the heart. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Peter answered, Repent, that is, change your views and purpose to accept the will of God in your inner selves instead of rejecting it. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of and release from your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Life lesson two is this. Power of the gospel is experienced in the life-transforming impact when God's grace is met by the believer's faith. Paul would say it beautifully. He said, it is by grace that you are saved through faith. It's not of your works, lest we would try to find a way to boast about it. It is, it is the unmerited favor of God. It, it is something that uh, you and I cannot earn and we absolutely do not deserve. There's, there, there's nothing that we can do in our works to impress God so much that He's got to say to us, come on, come on in to heaven. You know, you look so good down here on earth that I got to let you in. It's, it's not enough good works that you can accumulate over a lifetime that can tilt the scale to the point that you can somehow impress God and he's got to let you on in. If you're struggling out there and wondering, how can I find the, 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 the pathway to heaven or how can I find a relationship with God? It is not found in any guru. It is not found in any so-called leader. It is not found in any some, in some sort of prophet. It is only found in Jesus Christ and him alone. So he would have the audacity to say, Deacon, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life and no man can come unto the Father except by and through me. So if if you're struggling with the answer and the world is trying to confuse you into believing that somehow there are, there are, there must be many ways to God. You know, the, the logic that they want to use is how can, how can God be a loving God if, if he's going to send somebody to hell? Well, my Bible tells me that he's not sending you, that you're choosing the pathway. He lays before you two pathways. Choose. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. Choose. I've come and made, lived a perfect life in front of you through the virgin birth. I paid the price for your sins. Oh, there must be a price paid for your sins. And it cannot be paid by anything other than an unblemished lamb. Choose. I come and offer it to you freely. You're still guilty, but the blood the unblemished, the perfect sacrifice of God has stepped up in front of the judge and said, now I'll take, the, I'll take the blame, I'll take all the weight, I'll pay all the price for every single one of them if they'll only believe and accept the grace that I'm giving them to. They can't earn it. They don't deserve it. I know that, Father. But I've come down and I've paid the price for them if they'll just only accept the free gift. Choose. They said, Peter, you have, you, have, you have touched us in a place that has pricked us. And now we feel uncomfortable in our state. What must we do? Peter says, turn from and turn to God in Jesus Christ. And he has paid the price for your sin. Now the beauty of that gift, that gracious gift, y'all don't mind me taking some, just a few theological moments here, do you? The beauty of that gracious gift, is, as the text says beautifully, is that it not only pays the price, the ultimate price for your sin nature and your acts of sin, so that in a threefold way, it covers all of our needs. It covers our sins past. It covers the sinning that you're doing right now. <laughs> I must be talking to the camera. And it covers all the sins you could possibly do going forward. That's not cheap grace. That's costly grace. 
and it takes care of the penalty of your sin. I'm just stepping through this. Y'all don't mind, do you? Thank you, Lord, that my penalty has been covered. So I don't, I don't need to worry about my penalty. If you tell me it's covered by the blood, it's, it's covered by the blood. If, I, I don't need to worry about the judgment to come because you told me that it's covered by the blood. It's covered by the blood. If, if, God, if you're God and you're truthful to your word and your son paid the price for my sins and you tell me that my penalty is covered, then my penalty is covered, Lord. I'm, and my faith is catching on to your grace and accepting that my penalty is covered. And then you said, oh, but and how about the power of sin on your life? Oh, yeah, you, it says you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost now coming to live in, Holy Spirit is now coming to live inside of you as a believer. And therefore, you have been made alive again to God. Therefore, you now have relationship. Tell me if I'm getting too theological. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to walk through this. I just want you to know who you are. And because you're now a child of God, the Holy Spirit's living inside of you, new power source inside of you, you now have the power to be able to deal with the acts of sin in your life. Doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. The flesh is still wrestling with this thing. You, we, let's be real about this. We, we, we know that we, we're walking, we're babes, as babes in Christ, we're growing and more like Christ. And babies are always going to continue to make mistakes. Children are always continue to make mistakes, but... But as we grow more like Christ the whole, and yield ourselves more to the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, then things change. So my penalty is taken care of. The power of the presence is taken care of. And, and my future permanent condition is taken care of. I know that eternity is there for me. I know. So he's asking my questions. Who am I? I'm a child of the king. Old things passed away, all things become new. Any creature, new creature in Christ. Why am I here? My purpose is to glorify the Lord. And he's given me gifts and talents in order to utilize for that, 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 that service for him. Where am I going? I, I, I've gone to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you shall be also. My eternity is secure in Christ Jesus. And so now if, if the power of that gospel is being experienced in my life and it's transforming me, and it's transforming me and, and, and continually renewing me and, and, and strengthening me in my walk, that I just need to be obedient to the Lord and walk in his promises. Peter says, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, if I, if I had a few moments, I'd want to tell you this. There's something about, that, that, that says so much in so, such a short piece of a statement there that the Holy Spirit would now come and permanently live in you and me the third person of the Godhead God himself in the Holy Spirit now coming to live in me now if God loves you and I enough you and me enough to come and live in me that we might be reconciled back to him and that we might be able to walk in fellowship with him. Why are we worried? Why are we worried about all of this thing called life? I, I, I'm trying to, I'm looking through this with a new set of lenses here now. I'm, the things, I know my circumstances are going to whirl around me. I know difficulties are going to come. I'm still living in this corruptible body here. But, but, but he's told me that he's got the ability to take off the corruptible and put on the incorruptible. And so even though I'm not practically there, positionally, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus, and I'm working my way towards perfection when I see him face to face. And so this Holy Spirit dwelling in me, I'm trying to get off of this second life lesson. I thought I was only going to take a few minutes here. I may still take a few. The power and presence of this Holy Spirit, which he would say in, pre in, in, in other verses, Paul would say beautifully, uh, has, has been sealed in us, has sealed us through the Holy Spirit. Let's us know, take this home with you, please. Let's us know that when we be, once we belong to God we always 
belong to God. Just in, just in case you've been worrying about whether or not he's cast you aside because you, you did that, you made that mistake the other day. Amen. Just in case you're worrying about whether or not uh, your number of good deeds is weighing against your number of bad deeds and somehow up there in the heavenly judicial court there is this humongous scale and, and they're sitting back and every time you mess up they toss a pebble on the sin side. And every time you go out there and give food to the poor, poor, they toss a pebble on the good side. And you're wondering, you know, did I get enough pebbles on my good side today to outweigh my pebbles on the bad side? And you're, and you're wondering to yourself now, uh, how many good pebbles do I need to store up in order to make sure I get into heaven? You know, you've you got somebody telling you that kind of false theology. I came by to tell you that that's not what the Word says. The Word says it's by faith and by grace and through faith that you are saved. And this Holy Spirit living inside of you is inside of you permanently. And it's not a matter of a divine heavenly skill that determines whether you get in or you reject it. It's about your belief and acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Can I move from that point now? For the remission of your sin, redeemed and never to be sold back into the bondage of spiritual slavery again. He's a propitiation for your sin. And then these last few blocks of scriptures, 39 through 42, uh, I'll stay with the Amplified while the King James is on the screen for you. For the promise of the Holy Spirit is to and for you and your children and to and for all that are far away, even to as many as the Lord our God invites and bids come to himself. And Peter solemnly and earnestly witnessed and testified and admonished and exhorted with much more continuous speaking and warned, he reproved, advised, and encouraged them, saying, be saved from this crooked uh, perverse, wicked, and unjust generation. 